Hello there, welcome. This is Dom, and this is a basic redstone tutorial. Today we are going to explain the very, very basic natures of redstone itself. Um, redstone dust and various components associated with it. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to start off with uh, inputs and the basic crafting recipes to create those. One of which is a lever, one of the easiest. Um, in your crafting grid you will have a cobblestone block and a stick above it that will create a lever. The next one is a redstone torch. You will have a stick and a piece of redstone dust like I have in my hand above it. A tripwire hook which is right here. You would have to attach some string between two of them. I have an example over there. You would have a plank block a stick and a iron ingot on the top. Does not need to be a block like that. Um, a stone button, which now only requires one piece of stone in the crafting grid. A wooden button, which now only requires one wood plank block in the crafting grid. Doesn't matter what kind. A stone pressure plate, which requires two smooth stone um, uh, next to each other in the crafting grid and a wooden pressure plate which require two wooden planks of any kind next to each other in the crafting grid. So that's the basics of inputs uh, of how to create those. Um, the next thing we're going to do is figure out exactly what happens uh, with those inputs. And this, these are basically some ways of setting up um, you know, how they can be attached to blocks or used. Um, first off is the lever. Um, the lever is attached to this block, and I'm going to explain this block, and you refer to it as a power block. A power block, which is receiving some sort of input from like a button or a switch, is capable of sending power to all sides, whether it be the top, the sides, uh, for example, this face of the block is next to this redstone. Below it, um, it can also send power to, the power block will send to all sides. Um, this is also present with buttons. Um, pressure plates will create a power block and under it of course as you could tell some of this redstone was powered and all the sides as well. Um, now the redstone torches which are associated with these inputs um, redstone torches are always on so what we will see is since they are attached to a block that is either receiving power or is a power block it will turn off um, so we go over to this button here, which is only pressed in for one second, while a switch is switched off, or on and off, on and off, uh, just like the lights in your house. Uh, this is a wooden pressure, I mean a wooden button, and both of those are only on for one second. Wooden buttons have a very special characteristic. If you shoot them with a bow, oops, if you shoot them with an arrow, and the arrow is on the block that the button is on, it will actually push the button in. So it's a very, very cool little feature that they added to the game. We're going to get over to the pressure plates. When you step on a pressure plate, it sends out power. This is a stone pressure plate, and this is a wooden pressure plate. Both of them do the exact same job. The only difference between the two is that a wooden pressure plate will detect if there is an entity on top of it. For example, that lever that I just threw up there. It is pushing the pressure plate down. I think of it as wood is a little bit lighter than stone, so it kind of helps me remember that that's the one that will detect if there's something light on top of it. I'm going to get back here. Um, this shows that a, uh, the power from these devices does not need to be sent through a block first. Um, first, what we're going to do is flip this lever, and it's actually sending power out in this direction over here. Um, so that, and it also is powering that block, but there's no redstone attached to it. We are going to flick this lever here. It's going to send power in both this direction and this direction. It will also power uh, below it as well. Um, the same thing goes for buttons. It will send up power in all directions, and it will send power below um, where that grass block is. Uh, Look at, look at the, the um, devices themselves, or the inputs themselves, as occupying the entire airspace of the block. And that will help you visualize whether or not they will send power up, down, left, or right. So, 
Um, and also the same thing goes for pressure plates. They will send power directly from it left to right. We're going to get over to the trip wires now. And as you uh, saw earlier, that's how you craft them. You would push them on two blocks. They can only put on the side of a block. And they will only be able to be used if you run string on the ground between them. So if you take string, which is right here for me, and you place it on the ground, it's really hard to see, but it actually creates a line on the ground. And what you will do is you'll place these two on the blocks, and you'll run the string between the two. And whenever somebody walks over it, it's as if it acts like a pressure plate. Um, or anything really goes on top of it. Uh, I think an entity will even trigger it. Yep, it does. Um, and that will create these as power blocks as well. Uh, that will be able to distribute power in all directions. We're going to get over to here. Um, we're going to go into a little bit more depth about how redstone works. Um, and this is our controlling switch here. This controlling switch is powering both this redstone and this redstone. Let's do this branch over here first. As you can tell, the redstone climbs up the side of this block. If you place one here and here, it will automatically connect, as long as there is an airspace that it can travel through. Um, and as you can tell, it takes a corner as well. This corner, um, it will go up and up again uh, because there's redstone over here. Now, as you can tell, when I turn this off, on and off, when I turn the redstone on, it turns the torch off. When I turn the switch off, it turns the torch on. Uh, that is because the redstone above the block that it is sitting on um, is, well, sorry, yeah, the redstone above the block that it's sitting on is powered. Um, effectively shutting this torch off. That torch is also capable of spreading power in all directions of things facing it. So also, um, this block could receive, I mean, if we put redstone here, here, there, um, even in that position as well, it will receive power. Um, we're going to go over to this branch now, where the redstone is facing the block, effectively powering this block right here. All of these torches are attached to the block, so when we flip the switch, all these torches will go off, and vice versa. Now, we're going to take a look above this torch right here. This torch is under another block. Effectively, right now, it is powering this block, turning all of the torches attached to it off and the redstone on top on. And when we turn that torch off with this switch, it uh, reverses that, so it is not sending power to the block above leaving all these torches on and the redstone off. Now, when you turn a switch on and off, um, or not a switch specifically, a redstone torch on and off, uh, it, it is capable of uh, passing power left, right, up, down. But it is also capable of throwing it through blocks, as we saw before. That block can re distribute power uh, up, actually, sorry, not down, up, left, right, forward, back, all those, just basically the sides. Now, you have to be very careful with this, as in this specific example, and it is signified in red as do not do this. Um, if you have this block um, that is above a torch, and that t uh, block is touching a controlling wire for that torch, basically what it'll do is it'll pulse like this, and you'll burn your torch out. So let's look at this slowly. When we turn this off, um, and we're going to do this um, in slow motion, not really slow motion. When we turn this off, it unpowers this, which turns this on, powering this block, which powers the redstone, which turns this off, which unpowers the block, which turns off the redstone, and it creates a circle, a loop. And it goes so fast that the torch can't take it, and you'll hear that hissing sound, which turns off the torch. So that is a bad example of how to use redstone. So um, we're going to go over to how power is distributed through blocks and um, over distances now. When you turn on the switch, it powers this block. As you can tell, the redstone under it is not powered, as there is not a, a open airspace for it to travel and run down the side of the block, as we saw before. But it is powering this block, therefore shutting off that torch. It will also not distribute through the block itself to the other side. As you can tell, it only powers this one block. One way we can fix that is by adding another element, and this is called a repeater. And repeaters are one-directional, I would basically call them diodes, that
that can um, actually distribute power and extend your power. So I'm going to turn around here, and this is how you create a repeater. This is going to be in your crafting grid, and this is a stone, 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 redstone torch, redstone torch, and redstone in the middle. And that will be in a 3x3 three three grid, and you're going to have to create it look just like that. That will be all smooth stone. I'm going to change the time to zero so we can see again. So this is a repeater. When we turn the repeater on, and the repeater can be powered through a couple of means, um, through direct power and such, that repeater sends power to this block. That makes that block a power block, which can send power down, left, and up, you know, any direction. Okay, so we are going to look back at this example here. What if we wanted the power to continue through this block? We could either do it this way, um, by sending power through that direction, or we could do it in this method. And, and a really good advantage to this method, and I'm going to grab some redstone, really good advantage to this method is if we turn on this power here, it sends it to this block. This repeater um, will see that this block is powered and suck the power out of that block and send it in that direction. A really good advantage about this is that now you can run a wire under this block right here and not worried about not worry about any kind of feedback from this input. So it's very useful. As you can tell, this under block is not powered, as in this example. Under wire is not powered, just like in that example. Awesome. Now, we've basically just gone over a couple things, but now we got to figure out how long, what, what is up with the redstone, and why does it change color the farther down you go? And the answer to that is that it loses power after 15 blocks. And I'm going to scoot back here. And as you can tell, about 15 blocks of redstone are powered right now, all the way in this line. And all of them have these little um, particles jumping off of them. And the furthest, closest one to the power is brightest. So the further down we go, it gets dimmer and dimmer. And eventually it becomes just the standard redstone color. Um, that is because uh, these aren't powered anymore, and it, redstone can only be powered for 15 blocks long. So a good way to counteract this is by adding a repeater, and that repeater will take that 15th block signal, or you can place it up here if you'd like, um, and it will basically keep on repeating that signal. So if I turn off this right here, it will turn all of those on, and if I turn it back on, it will keep on sending power basically even further. There we go. Okay, so as I said before, redstone can be powered in a few uh, different ways, and these is, this is a repeater here. A repeater can be powered directly from some sort of source, through a redstone, um, from a block, or even from redstone that isn't pointing at it. Now, remember that redstone pointing at a block makes sure, is, makes sure that that block is receiving power. Um, redstone will actually turn into a repeater, um, allowing it to be powered. It's very nice. And another good thing about uh, repeaters is that whenever redstone is above a block, um, it can actually suck the power out of that block as well, distributing in all directions. It doesn't need to even be in the same height. Now, what doesn't work is if you power it in the wrong direction. If you look at a repeater, it kind of has an arrow to it. And you have to place a some sort of power source behind that arrow, and it will send power out through the arrow. And in this example, it does not do that. Now, why do repeaters look this way, and why can we right-click them? That is because you can actually change the delay on a repeater. Now, in this example, if you push the button, power is sent through very rapidly, and you actually can see how fast it propagates. If you hit this button here, it goes a lot slower, and that is because the repeaters have been extended to four ticks apiece. So as right now, um, in the short example, this is one tick. Now what we can do is actually extend these out, a few each, and it'll actually take longer for the charge to propagate to the end. Awesome. So now we've learned the internals of redstone and how most of the things work without having quirks involved. I'm going to explain the outputs and what you can do with them, um, and basically everything that can receive power and what it does. 
Um, first things we can do is uh, we're going to look at a door and how it can be powered. It can be powered through all of these active blocks, and they open and close the door. Um, either iron or wooden doors do the same thing. And it has to be powered through one of these blocks or directly through itself. Another one is a, uh, a piston, and both sticky and normal pistons act the exact same way. And I'm going to add this back here for argument's sake. A piston can be powered bottom, side. Um, power can be on top of a block beside it. Um, it also can even be powered from the top, but it's kind of useless because it breaks the block <laughs> afterwards. And power can be given directly to the device itself, as in all redstone devices. Um, same, thing, same thing goes for lamps. can be powered on all sides, as well as on top of a block next to it, or on top of a block above it. And a cool thing about lamps is that if you send power, and this becomes a powered redstone lamp, um, and the, there's either a wire, a repeater, or a... Ooh, I don't know if... Oh, yeah, you can do that. Um, <laughs> um, a lever or a redstone torch directly at one of these blocks, it will actually send power to the next lamp as well. So it's a very cool feature. Another cool thing about these lamps is that you can run redstone along the top, um, effectively creating really easy lighting uh, without having to worry about adding, blo adding blocks or anything. You can just add wire to the tops of them. So it's really nice. Another device is these dispensers, and it will activate the dispenser um, in the exact same way as we saw before with the lamps and such on all sides. Same thing goes for the dispensers with adding wires to the top. And the only way to do this is if you add some sort of blocks behind it, and you have to right-click the redstone on those blocks. That's the only way it's going to get on top of those dispensers there. And as you can tell, they all activated. With that sound, it means they're empty. Another thing we can uh, activate with redstone is these note blocks. These note blocks all give off um, sound when powered, and this is just an example of how you can power them. Each one of these blocks here is sitting on something different. And these types of blocks, so wood or logs, sand or gravel, glass or any kind of um, non-solid block, a stone block or dirt or some sort of earthy material, <laughs> um, they do different sounds. So as you can tell, there's a very, I don't know, different sounds coming from each one of those blocks. You have to be careful because each one of these note blocks has to have an air block above it. Um, I basically remember this because uh, you have to be able to see the note block. So that helps me to, I mean, the note symbol come out. So that helps me to remember that there needs to be an air block above it. Because if you block the block, the, the note symbol, none of them will work. So that was the example in the end here. Each one of these note blocks, as you can tell, makes a different sound because of the material that it's sitting on. Another thing that we can power is trap doors can be placed on bottom or tops of the blocks, powered similarly to the other, other previous things. Um, other things are trap doors can be powered similarly to doors themselves. And the very last thing that I'm going to show today is powering TNT. You can power it from the top, the side, and directly. And thank you guys for watching this redstone tutorial. This is the basics. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. So thank you guys and have a good day.